My grandfather had so much influence on me as a child. He was my hero, no doubt. He inspired me with incredible stories about those magnificent men and their flying machines. His office was filled with tables covered in papers, and there was a massive world map on one of his walls. He and Nana used to take us to a place called Adventure City when we'd go to visit them in Anaheim, and he's also the person who introduced me to a little movie series called The Rescuers. All of this combined to give me a lust for adventure, specifically that old-timey aviator goggles and leather jacket kind. That flying a biplane with your scarf whipping in the wind behind you as you approach Horizon's unknown kind. It's why escapism is my favorite aspect of video games, but it's only half of why I like renowned explorers, international society, as much as I do. Before it became a dedicated archive channel for my live streams, my alt channel, Team Pizza Plays, was where I posted a lot of Let's Play content, and one of our go-to games was this. I figured it's a roguelike, we could have played this game a hundred times and still encountered new things. And then we did. And we were. We posted over 30 episodes of Renowned Explorers, and it never got boring once. But possibly the best decision I made for that series was to bring fellow Team Pizza members Drawman and Hidden in the Truth along for the ride. This is so special to me because I was an impossible shut-in as a kid. My sister was just about my only friend, and she didn't have a whole lot of interest in games. That changed when moving to Ohio. I got to play magic, I got to roleplay with people for the first time, I got to experience all of this nerdy stuff that I had always wanted to, but never had the other people to pull off. So these are some of my few gaming memories I can point to and say I shared them with someone who was just as excited about what was going on as I was. We laughed, we joked, we argued over whether or not it was a good decision at the time to push our luck for the chance at some treasure. We all started to lose focus on the conversation when a run started going particularly well, and we actually had a chance of finishing this one. It helps that Renowned Explorers is such a cool concept for a game to begin with. Yes, you can go the route of punching all your problems out of existence, but there's a lot more focus on resolving encounters in a variety of both physical and diplomatic ways. See, instead of depleting a health bar, you're trying to break your enemy's spirit. And you can do this by assaulting them with harsh rhetoric, convincing them that your cause is just and right, or by whipping out a sword and ending conversations the easy way. Or the hard way, depending on what the mood of the fight is right now. There's this rock-paper-scissors mechanic going on, where you're trying to counter your foe's approach with a superior strategy. If they're being aggressive, you want to taunt them into being way less accurate with insults. If they're being nasty, you embarrass them and increase your speech defense by being the bigger man. And you want to make sure you don't ignore this, because the stat bonuses a mood advantage gives are so huge that they can swing the entire fight. Then you have the cast of characters you can play as, and this, right here, is where you're going to get the most mileage out of this game. Sure, they have their own unique abilities and mechanics in combat, but these guys are way, way more than just stat sheets. Having specific characters over others can totally change the way certain events would unfold because they have strengths, weaknesses, vices, or particularly strong views on how to handle the situation. They might be superstitious, or proud, or have dreams of grandeur, or even a relationship to one of the characters you just happen to meet. And this may or may not come up in your adventure based on where you go and what you do. You never really know what's going to happen. It gets even better when you realize that every team needs a leader, and every character has a special skill they bring to the table when in that leadership position. You even unlock more potential leaders by including that person on another team and completing enough expeditions with them, encouraging you to play just one more game and see if their skill gives you just what you need. There's the mad scientist Anna and the massive bonuses she gets from research, the tactical genius Victor and his surprisingly rare support skills, and Pedrino is just the best, or as we lovingly took to calling him, Pinhedro. This man became a legend over the course of our playthroughs. He's competent, he's charismatic, he throws amazing parties, and he's just good at everything, even if the stats screen says otherwise. 
If a challenge he undertook comes up bad, he didn't fail. He's just taking it easy on his enemies because it's more fun for him if he doesn't win all the time. <gasps> oh my god! I just realized something. Heroic, overpowered, bald. I'm so happy that I not only got to experience this game, but also experience it the way I did. That I got to share it with other people. Not just the guys in the call with me, but also you, the viewers, the people that make these kinds of videos possible. And when I really think about it, that goes back to my grandfather too. Because I endeavor to live my life by his example. By being insightful, kind, and doing the absolute best I can for those I care about. I guess what I'm saying is, thanks for being here for me, guys.